Welcome to Medicine and Health with Dr. Paul Anderson, and that is me, obviously. And we're in the middle of a long 16-segment podcast looking at long COVID or post-COVID syndrome. And what I usually say is, and I, I, we talked more about this in the, the, fir, the very first installment, doctors are not in agreement about like how much, it, how many people have it, is it good, is it bad, or whatever. And we went way into that with the research there. But the bottom line is, I want to do these segments because if you do have post-infectious illness and it's long COVID, uh, it doesn't matter how many people have it. If you got it, you got, you have a problem. So this particular segment, what I want to get into is brain and neurological inflammation and changes that go on that um, are common in post-infectious illness and we're now seeing as very common in the post-COVID, uh, long COVID patient. So again, if you're not sick and you don't have this and you've had COVID once or two or three times as many people have, then great, you know, you, you can move on. Uh, if you are sick and any of these symptoms sound, you know, like they might be you, some of these things we're talking about may explain them and uh, get into them. So very early on, we saw in primary, in the infection COVID, people were losing their taste and losing their sense of smell, one or both. Um very, very disruptive, very disturbing. And one of the things that happens when you get an inflammatory infectious process and you lose a sensory uh, apparatus, you lose the, you know, the input from the sensory apparatus, in this case, your taste uh, and your smell, the longer it's gone, the longer it takes for it to come back. And so in the case of something like uh, long COVID induced um, loss of smell, loss of taste. It's easier to start working on it and do something about it if it's not been uh, gone very long, meaning days to weeks. If you lose a sensory uh, set of nerve impulses and the nerves actually damaged because of inflammation, etc., and there's a lot of research on. Uh, from the, you know, the ear, nose, and throat, and the neurology community on how would that happen? How would the virus get in there and do it? But the bottom line is, if you lost those senses and they're not coming back, you've damaged some amount of nerve input. So the longer they're gone, then the longer they're going to take to return. It's similar to if you damage a nerve from some other way and you do something to help that nerve heal up, it doesn't take as long for the nerve to heal as if you damage the nerve and it's been not working very well for six months or a year or five years. It takes longer to heal that up. And so as we go through this, um, the first thing I was thinking we saw it was, well, if we have a viral illness that is known to commonly take out taste, smell, or both, at least certainly in some of the earlier variants. And what I'm hearing now from people currently infected in January 2023, uh, some of them are also now having you know, taste and smell issues as well with the newer variants. So my thought was, well, if I'm seeing that, I bet we're going to see nerve issues and inflammatory issues with the post-infectious illness that we now call long COVID. And indeed we do. So we started to see long COVID patients, though. We started to see, I'll give you an example, uh, a young woman who was otherwise healthy before COVID, and all of a sudden now it's six months later, and not only is their taste having a hard time coming back, but they're experiencing and they report in, you know, well, okay, you've got long COVID, what does that look like? What are the symptoms there? So they report that, well, not only is my taste, you know, messed up, but she says, um, I didn't used to get a lot of headaches. And now I kind of have this low grade headache all day long. Also before COVID, you know, I would sleep pretty well. My sleep cycles were pretty good. Now I'm either sleeping too much or I'm very wakeful all night long. And then 
the next, you know, set of symptoms, she says, is, you know, also along with this sort of low-grade headache that just doesn't want to go away, um, it just seems like I'm hurting more kind of all over, not in one place, just, I just don't feel as good, I'm kind of hurting. So, this story is very, very common, and it, it illustrates that these other things we're talking about, so we talked about looking at co-infections that came along and piled on for the ride when you had your COVID. We talked about looking at hormonal shifts that make you maybe more inflammatory, make you not heal as well, etc. And now we're looking at, well, what, what about the neurological system and how bad can it be? Well, all these things can happen at the same time, but the nervous system does get an inflammatory component with many people during COVID. And our experience has been that while that happens to everybody, if you had symptoms during COVID that might include uh, smell or taste change, even if they came back, smell or taste changes, uh, tingling, numbness, that sort of thing, sleep alteration, you can in the long COVID state, mostly due to the post-infectious nature, have an inflammatory uh, condition going on where you don't have a um, say a major disease level of inflammation in your nervous system, but you have enough inflammation that you, like the fire won't go out so that now some of the regulatory protective membranes around your brain, for example, become less functional. And there's, uh, when I teach about long COVID in the physician space, there's research that I'll show that talks about how these inflammatory chemicals that our body naturally uses during an infection or that it get real high with COVID can go and they can go to these protective membranes in the central nervous system and actually make them less protective. It's like they get leakier. Okay, We'll call it leaky uh, blood brain barrier, blood brain barrier permeability issues. And we now from the neurology community actually have some uh, compelling research on that. Although we've always known it exists. So when you're doing that, then you have to think, well, what symptoms would maybe a more inflamed brain or nerves cause? Well, the thing with the brain is that it does lots and lots of things for you. It's a big space with a lot of control areas. And so the brain, wherever it is more most disordered or imbalanced or damaged, the area that is most disordered or damaged will then give symptoms to whatever that area of your brain does downstream. So, for example, if you have a stroke and the stroke is in one area of your brain, you might have a motor deficit. You can't move certain things. If you have a stroke in another part of your brain, you may actually uh, be able to move, but you might uh, have shifts in your personality or your memory or other things like that. So your brain is very complex. Inflammation in your brain can be all sorts of symptoms. Things that we commonly hear about and see, though, because your brain's in charge of so many things, are uh, chronic headache or other type of pain syndromes, whether it's head pain, peripheral pain, that's real common. Another thing, as I mentioned in that little story, is... Um, chronic and recurrent uh, sleep problems. Now, if you didn't sleep great before COVID and now either you're sleeping too much or your sleep is even worse, so you're not sleeping well at all, that kind of makes sense. But we're also seeing people who used to sleep pretty well and then after the viral illness, their circadian rhythm seemed to be thrown off. They don't seem to sleep as well. They're wakeful at night. And that could be many things. The hormone changes that we talked about in the other section can feed into that. Uh, chronic infections can feed into that, but also inflammation in the nervous system can feed into sleep disorder. And there's many, many other things that can happen in that respect. Now, if you're not having those things, but you're having more of either a sensory problem like your taste or your smell isn't coming back, or you're having a peripheral nervous system problem, like maybe numbness and tingling, et cetera, the first thing that you need to think about is if those are symptoms that are persistent, then 
um, you might, your, your doctor may send you for a particular test to make sure they're not from some other cause. But a lot of times with long COVID, what we see is that you get the test done, say it's an MRI or some blood test, and they don't show any, you know, big bad disease there, which is great, but you still have those problems, you got numbness and tingling or some other problem. So if you've ruled out the big bad problems, which we talked about in an earlier segment, then you have to think, well, this inflammatory nerve condition can create a problem. So what we often uh, do with folks there is we will check, make sure there's not a hormonal component or an infectious component. And then a lot of times, uh, if there's a symptomatic need for a medication, that's fine. That doesn't really fix the problem. So if you need a symptomatic medication, great. But other things that can be helpful um, in many people, if their progesterone hormonal stuff goes down or their cortisol goes down, you work on those. That will help on the healing end with this inflammatory process. There are some botanical uh, medications, some herbs that we will use with people. Uh, we commonly use uh, the uh, Ayurvedic herb, Boswellia. It's a very good neurological uh, agent, curcumin, uh, alpha lipoic acid, etc. And again, this is not medical advice, it's just historically what we do. If you're going to use things like that, work with a practitioner who knows what they're doing with those things. But those things actually, in addition to some symptom management, can actually help the uh, nervous system inflammatory response improve over time. All right, well, we're down to the last minute here in this particular section. So neurological inflammation is a real thing. There's mechanics that have been outlined in the research from the neurology community and it can cause many, many disruptive symptoms, especially in long COVID. So it's another thing to put on to the list of things to consider. I'm Dr. Paul Anderson. You can find us uh, on our hub website, dranow.com, D-R-A-N-O-W.com. And so you can get the link to the YouTube channel. You can get to link to your favorite pod burner. Uh, all of our outlets there. There's also newsletters, etc., on that site, D R A N O W. And if you're on a pod burner or YouTube, uh, which is growing for us, please like, share, subscribe, and do notifications so that if the algorithm changes, you'll still know that we're doing uh, these programs for you. But we are out of time for today, and so I will see you on the next installment. Recording. St-